Hey traders, Richard K here from Price Action and Income and welcome back to another exciting video where I'll be looking at price and time relationships within markets. And this is something that um, can be quite important or useful to discern whether a high or a low, whether it's in a correction or in a trend, could be important high or low. Um, using price and time relationships, as I'll be showing you right now, especially on gold, um, can be a very powerful indication of whether a important high or low has been formed. Um, you guys will probably have noticed that I've done a previous video on time relationships uh, or time cycles, as some traders might call it. And uh, I've just noticed a very important high might have just formed in gold. Obviously, price is coming down quite hard at the moment. Um, the hardest has come down for quite a few years already. Um, now, you know that I won't I normally look at market geometry in conjunction with uh, other techniques, but uh, you'll in this scenario hopefully see that uh, this recent high that we've experienced was actually something I've been looking at for a while. Um, and just to jump into things, you'll see all these blue markers over here. We'll actually look at price and time relationships between ranges and, and time as well. And I'll be focusing a bit more on that a little bit later in the video. So please stick around. And I hope you do enjoy what I have to show you today. Um, first of all, um, this high here, the utmost high was in September. What's the August? August, September. Let me just get that exact high here in 2011 when everyone thought price was going to reach the $2,000 level and it didn't came down. Just now that I'm looking at a weekly time frame over here. So if we took a time projection or measured the amount of time it took from this high to this low year in 2015, it gives us about 1,547 days. Now, just uh, keep in mind, again, I'm looking at a weekly time frame. I'm going to show you a little bit uh, how this looks on a daily time frame for a bit more accuracy. But uh, it took... 1,547 days uh, plus minus uh, from that high into this low. And now if you project or copy and paste this exact time range and project it forward, then you'll see that price very nearly on the weekly time frame, and I'll show you on the daily how it was actually within a day, um, it nearly actually got this high. Now in conjunction with an upper red warning line and also the center part of a channel, uh, price pipped that center channel line and there was a confluence of multiple market geometry lines as, at this high as well. And then obviously now looking at this uh, time range that repeating itself uh, almost to the point, um, you can discern obviously this is a little bit after the fact, but uh, this is just how these sort of things work. If you want to figure out how important the high or low is, then using time cycles as well, or range cycles and time cycles, or relationships between the two, that you can concern that, uh, yeah, this is an important high and that we might be either going sideways for an extended period of time, or who knows, but we might even go higher again. But I do believe that this is an important high. Obviously, price did react quite strongly to the downside, so it's almost confirming itself that this time cycle, in conjunction with market geometry lines, was an important high that just occurred. Now, just to quickly switch back to a daily time frame to actually make this a bit more accurate, if we use this exact high over here, which was on the... Let me just get that date right, 100%. It was on the 5th of September 2011, and you'll see that already we have a different um, sort of days in the scale here between what the weekly is saying. The weekly is saying 1,547, where on the daily it's showing 1,549 days. So that's just from that high in 2011 to this low here on the 3rd of December 2015. And if we project that same distance or in time forward, then you'll see that we just hit a day before this actual high was an exact same time in distance 
than that previous high to the low. So um, that's why it's important to also look at the daily and weekly time frames. Um, you'll also see there's a little bit of a discrepancy between that previous extension, which was 1,549 days, and here says it's 1,555 days. And that's simply because of trading holidays, um, times that the exchange is not trading, etc., etc., or stuff falling over a weekend. So you'll always have a discrepancy um, with the exact amount of time or it, it might take between important highs and lows, in this case, high to low, low to high, miss this high with almost one day and price reverse lower. And remember, like I showed you before, we also had these uh, market geometry lines uh, in conjunction with that time cycle and price turned lower. And then uh, I've, I can go on and on about these time price relationships. Um, I can go backwards, but I found that I, in this video, I'll just show you from this important low year in 2016, how there was also price and time relationships between these ranges and uh, corrections. Um, and to start this one off, and I will go again to a daily as well a little bit later, after I've shown you this, I um, just want to show you some important or really cool relationships that we had here. So from this uh, low in 2015 into this high in July 2016, you'll see that we had $328.91. Uh, we could probably round that off to two. 329 i'm just going to keep with this number here uh, we had 328 dollars increase from this low and if we take a calculator then you'll see that let me just get my calculator out properly so you guys can see so we had 328 dollars to the upside was the increase in price but it took 161 days. And this is where we'll see there, there's relationships between the actual bars and the actual days and vice versa. Um, and you'll have to play around with these things. Uh, they're not always 100% accurate. You can be normally a day or two out. Uh, in many cases, they can be quite spot on. So if you look at this, we had a $328 increase in price, but it only took half the time for price to pull back. If you take 328 divided by two, you get 164 days, but you'll find that we actually had a weekend where this fell over. So that's within a very tight range where this low came in. So it took $328 in price to go up, but took 161 days down. So that's a 50% relationship between the range and the actual time in this instance. And like I said before, there will sometimes be relationships between the actual time Sometimes there'll be relationships between the actual price and time. So that's a cool relationship over there. Um, then I took this from this low uh, on the 12th December to where was this actual high in January 2018. It took 406 days to complete. But look what happened when price then came down into this low on the 13th of August, and this is now a weekly chart, so it will be the start of the 13th of August, you'll see that it took 203 days. And this is where we now have a relationship between time. So it took 406 days to go up, but then it took again half of that period, 203 days to come down. So it took half the amount of time that it took for this price to make this utmost high to the upside. So there's some really cool uh, price and time or ranges and uh, time relationships within these corrections or in this mess that happened here since this low in 2015. So price and time relationships over there. And then what is also really cool to note that something also confirmed this high over here was that there were price and time relationships between these swings going into this high. And to show you that, I just want to switch back to my daily chart. And I want to start from, now we already discussed this, uh, this recent move higher that we've experienced in, since this low here in August 2018. So we had a 134 bar or 188 day increase over here. Um, there's not much relationship between this increase and the next one I'll show you. But what I also want to uh, have you focus on are these corrections. 
Now we'll see that this correction at this utmost low took 51 bars or 71 days. Then the next move upwards took 54 days. Now forget a little bit about the actual ranges here and there's also the weekends and stuff in between here. So you'll see from what I'm going to show you now is that there's a lot of repetition between 47, let's say 50 days odd. Even between your corrections like this one took 71 days where at 51 bars in 71 days and here it took 49 bars, 69 days. So that's just one or two days out. There's a, there's a about a correlation of a day or two separate from each other. So um, just keep that in mind as well. So then we had from this utmost low to that high, we had 47 bars or 65 days. Again, guys, uh, close to the 50. And then we have from this low to this high over here, we had 39 bars, 57 days. And remember now that we are actually going into a high or top here that from this low into this high here we had 55 days uh, or 39 bars again this is again guys because we're dealing with weekends or trading holidays in between but the exact same move from this high to this high from this low to this utmost high they running into this long-term time cycle exactly took 39 bars 39 bars um Guys, this is just a quick video to show you that there are price and time relationships between ranges uh, and price. They are prevalent. Uh, it's very difficult to do. I'll be the first one to admit this uh, in real time. But if you're normally looking at a window and previous price and time relationships between corrections or extensions in trends, and you are using then a combination of uh, market geometry, which is a powerful technique to add on top of this price and time relationships, then you can quite often discern whether a important low or high has formed or is about to form. And that, guys, was just a quick video to show you the uh, relationships that can be prevalent between time and price or ranges and price or time and how they can intermingle with each other. Um, if you guys really enjoyed this video, I know there was a lot of uh, comments previously on the time cycle um, video that I did. A lot of you guys like that. And if, but if you do like something like this to be done again, then please let me know in the comments section and I could probably have a look at crude oil. It's one of my favorite markets to trade. Uh, the commodities uh, with price and time cycles work extremely well uh, if this is markets that you do follow. Um, maybe just give me a recommendation of something you would like to have me have a look at and then I'll be happy to do a video on something like this again in the future. Okay guys, until next time, this is Richard K from Price Action Income. Goodbye.